Welcome to Scratch Coding. This is a series of videos to help you learn to code using Scratch. With Scratch, you can create your own stories, puzzles, and games, and whatever else you want to create. You're in control of everything in the programs that you write. Create a free account at scratch.mit.edu so you can do coding with us. Today, we're going to create something like this. A fish aquarium. Let's look at the code. The blue fish is selected, and so this is the code for the blue fish. Before we look at the code, let's look at this X and Y numbers over here about the blue fish. Right now, the blue fish is at X 190 and Y minus 154. Notice if I move the blue fish around, it changes those numbers. Sometimes when you write code, you change this X number or this Y number. See, in the code for today, we've got change X by 2, and we're setting the Y position. Scratch makes it really easy to deal with X and Y positions, because anytime you move your sprite around, it's going to tell you what the position is. So there's tricks to work with that. But let's spend a few minutes looking at what this X and Y means. Remember how in a number line, as you go to the right, the numbers get bigger? And on the other side of zero, how the numbers are negative? This line that goes left and right is called the x-axis when you're talking about coordinates. This x-axis that goes left and right on this coordinate system is similar to the number line. As you go to the right, the numbers get bigger, and as you go to the left, the numbers get smaller. Everything to the left of the middle is a negative number. And there's also a line going up and down, and this is the y-axis. Right in the middle, x is 0 and y is 0, and as you go up, y gets bigger. As you go down, y gets smaller. As you go to the right, x increases, and as you go up, y increases. Let's go back to our program. Let me tear apart this code. When the green flag is clicked, we're looking at our clownfish. The clownfish will go to a random position. So it's x and y would just be a random place. Next, let's try putting in a forever loop, changing its x by 2. So when you change x by 2, it's going to add 2 to it. So as x position is changing and just increasing by 2, and it's looping forever. But then when he gets all the way to the right-hand side of the screen, he can't keep increasing. So to make it look like another fish swims by, I want to change his X location to all the way over here on the left. If I drag him all the way over here on the left, it shows that his X position is negative 231. If I stuff him way over, we've got negative 259. Let's see what it is all the way to the right side. That's a positive 246. Let's look at the rest of the code. It says, if the X position is greater than 280, which means he has traveled all the way over, so we barely see any of his tail left. If it's greater than 280, then we're just going to pick a random place for the Y to be, how far up or down he is, and we're going to set X to negative 282. So when he gets all the way to the right, 
it's going to move him all the way to the left. So forever it's going to keep looping. It's going to keep moving him to the right. And then when he gets all the way to the right, it'll move him all the way over to the left really fast. And just pay attention to the orange guy. And it just picked a random place to put him at up and down. And moved him all the way back to the left to start over. Let's start a new project and look at the X and Y position a little more. Let's get rid of Scratch Cat and just get a ball. I'm going to go to the backgrounds and choose a background that has the X and Y position on it that Scratch provides for us. It's a little confusing, but what it's saying is right here in the middle, X is 0 and Y is 0. All the way up this y-axis, if you get to right here, then x is still 0 and y is 180. Let's test that. If I put my dot right here in the middle, I'm a little off, but look, x is 0 and y is almost 0. If I bring it up, x is 1 and y is 180. Let's just go ahead and make that 0. It's hard to drag it in the exact right spot. So if x is 0 and y is 180, then my red dot is right there. Let's change x and y and make x 240 and y 0. If the graph is correct, that will put my red dot right here. Let's make our ball smaller so it'll be easier to tell where it is. And so that's 240, 0. If I go back to the middle, and I don't move any left or right, if I don't change x, and I just go down 100, it should be right here, which means x would be 0, and y will be a negative 100. It's good to know where Scratch is getting all these XY numbers from, but don't be worried about it because Scratch makes it easy. When you move your sprite or your character wherever you want it, it's going to tell you what the X and Y is. Let's get rid of this character, the ball, and our backdrop. We don't need this coordinate system. What we want is to make an aquarium. So I have my background, now I'm going to choose a fish. So here's my clownfish. Let's see what move 10 steps does. I'll just click on it. It just moves him to the right. So that's the same as changing the X, as long as he's pointed in that direction. What happens if I change X by 10? What would happen if I put that in a forever loop, which means everything that I put in here is just going to keep happening over and over again forever. So it changed x by 10 and then changed x by 10 again, and it kept doing that until my clownfish hit the wall and then it just stopped. So when my clownfish gets all the way to the right, I want him to come back over here to the left and start over. So all the way to the right is 282. I need to find a block over here on the left that says when my fish is all the way over to the right, I want him to start back over on the left. I think I can do that with this if block. If something, then do something else. My do something else is going to be set x to a negative 282. And what do I put in here for the if? 
if my fish is all the way on the right hand side. So if my x is 282, or let's just say if it's bigger than 280. So if my x position, where he is in, on x, is greater than 280. You think he's going too fast? Let's change my x by 5 every time it goes through the loop instead of 10. So when the green flag is clicked, he's going to keep moving to the right by increasing x by 5. And every time it goes through, it's going to say if he's all the way over to the right, or in other words, if the x position is greater than 280, then change the x position all the way back over to the left. The only other thing I did in that other code was just randomly make him show up. His height was random. So what we can do is just have him first go to a random position and then change the x to be all the way to the left. Every time we click the green flag, we want him to start in a random place. So I'm going to pull another one of that same code to the beginning of the program. So when the green flag is clicked, he's going to go to a random place and then start moving to the right. The only other thing I need to do is have more fish in the aquarium. I can right click on this fish and duplicate him. Right click on him again and duplicate him. Right click, duplicate. Right click, duplicate. We have five fish. If I click on the green flag, they all just start off in a random place and just swim. Something weird about these fish, the costumes for the fish are different fish. So all I have to do is change the costume to give me a blue fish. And I'll change this one's costume to be this tiger fish. And I can change this one to be the yellow guy. And because I did the code first before I copied it, it copied all the code to the other fish. Let's see what it looks like full screen. You can make some of them go slower. In my other program, I changed some of these positive numbers to negative numbers and changed the direction the fish were going. That's the end of this lesson. Now it's your turn. Choose a background and put at least one character on the screen and change his X and Y position. Play around with the different blocks and if you want to, make an aquarium with a bunch of fish like I did. If you can move your character around on the screen by changing its X position, then congratulations, you've mastered this lesson. This free coding lesson was provided by Stim and Games. Watch more lessons and keep practicing so you can create new worlds and games and make your ideas come to life. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.